The Westminster Shorter Catechism begins with this question. What is the chief end of man? And the answer to that question is, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Wow. Glorify God. Glory to God. Glory. It's a marvelous term. We use it frequently in our Christian vernacular. We use the word glory when we think of God's personhood, his being. We think of those marvelous characteristics of his and the core of his being, his awesome transcendent holiness, his absolute perfection beyond anything that you and I can comprehend. We have no no evidence or, or understanding of goodness here in this world that compares to the holiness and the goodness, the absolute perfection of God, which means when he expresses his love, he's going to express it in the highest form. You can't get any higher than that. And by the way, he's never going to express it any shorter than it is. He can't because that's his nature. It's his character. So when he sets his love upon you and me, it cannot be retracted. It is unconditional. It is holy, holy, holy God in his holy character. And that love can never let me go. Isn't that amazing? God in his awesome character, his being, his person. Oh, glory to God. And then we give him glory for all the things that he's done. My goodness, the created order blows our minds, doesn't it? We sit out here on our deck and look at the stars at night. Seems so close you could just reach out and pluck it. God made all of that. The scripture says the heavens of heavens declare his glory. Hmm. And I think about all these trees around us, just beautiful green. <laughs> you know what those trees are doing? They're sucking in all my carbon dioxide as I'm breathing, right? And then they're putting back out oxygen. Just think of that. I know that's simplistic in the statement, but it's complex in the production of it. But I couldn't live here, nor could you, if that wasn't true. And this is all a part of God's doing, his glory. But there's even one that's more important than that. And that is his glory and salvation. Oh my. That angel that appeared to the shepherds on the hillside outside of Bethlehem. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then the Bible says, and suddenly there was a heavenly host that filled that scene. And you know what they were singing? Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill. Hmm. What were they singing glory for? The coming of the Savior. Oh, the glory of God in salvation. That God himself would take on human flesh live a perfect life in our place, and then go to a cross and pay the full penalty for our sin. This is glory. I trust you know this glory today, that this glory has become a part of your life, that you exercise this glory and praise to God at all times. I think this must have been some of the thoughts that Elisha Hoffman was entertaining back in 1879 when he wrote this wonderful gospel song. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Let's sing it together. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, I am so wondrously saved from sin, Jesus so sweetly abides within There at the cross where it took me 
Glory, glory, glory. 